Where would we be without our animal pals? Our ancestors settled all over the world, hunting alongside our faithful dog companions. We obtained a stable source of protein from chickens, harnessed the brute strength of cows to plow our fields, and sheared sheep to make clothes that kept us warm. What animal would you, my dear viewer, designate as the most drastically influential on civilization and history? While there will always be differing viewpoints, I submit to you the horse. After all, civilizations were destroyed and created under the crushing brutality of the horse's hooves. You see, unlike other livestock that are used to make things more plentiful, the horse is unique in its potential for unprecedented destruction. Let's set sail for the horses! The most destructive animal. <laughs> Consider the feet of animals at the risk of giving our furry viewers a goddamn seizure. Animals either have soft, adorable paws or hoofs. Horses are hoofed animals, in fact being the most extreme of them all. The soles of their feet are actually the equivalent of a really overgrown human toenail, and their feet are actually just really pointy toes. Isn't that weird? Horses evolved one big fat metal toe while the others degenerated over time. Evolutionarily speaking, horses are hyper-optimized to gallop free on dry land. Horses descended from this extinct creature called the Hirocotherium that roamed the earth 50 million years ago. It was this adorable fox-sized little thing that would munch on the soft leaves and berries of small plants. While they mostly populated and evolved in the North American continent, their descendants started to expand out and grow in size around 30 million years ago. Their toes started the aforementioned degeneration, forever locking them in a diabolical fuck you to their creator. About 4.5 million years ago, the Ekus started to make way in the world, equipped with a middle toe the size of an adult male's forearm and strongly resembling the modern horses we know today. The Ekus diversified their DNA pool and an offshoot successfully migrated over to the old world around 900,000 years ago. Unfortunately, they ran into our ruthless hunter ancestors that gleefully massacred them for meat and leather. The old world Ekus galloped for their lives and were pushed back to the northern prairies. What about the ones that were left behind? Well, they suffered an even more tragic fate. Just like the unfortunate giant sloth or the mammoth, the Clovis people that crossed over to North America hunted them into complete extinction around 9,000 years ago. Right around the time that the last horse in the New World got a spear in its hide, the earliest signs of agriculture started appearing in the Old World. Humans settled in the warm southern region and transitioned into farm-based lifestyles around the major rivers. Animals like sheep, goats, cows, pigs, and chickens were tamed as livestock for secondary purposes and were allowed to live just a little bit longer instead of being immediately hunted and consumed. The horse, on the other hand, had no real merit for ancient humans. For one, we kind of evicted them to the northern regions anyway, so there was very little overlap to begin with. Furthermore, cows could pull heavier carts, pigs could spawn more children, and chickens required less resources to sustain. As time passed and humans unlocked more on the tech tree, political concepts like class, society, and country started to emerge. This is when the famous four main civilizations rose to power. Because these primitive civilizations had a pitifully low agricultural output, people started to migrate up north when the carrying capacity was inevitably reached. These migrants settled in regions with desolate and fertile soil and had to change up their lifestyles to adapt. Relying on agriculture alone was no longer viable. They started herding sheep and cows in mass to compensate. Maybe it's time to revisit the viability of taming this weird fuck you animal, the horse. As the cow-driven cart was replaced by the horse-driven carriage, civilization spread all the way to the far plains. The main civilizations were more than happy to stay put and play SimCity, but they needed various supplies and resources to build up their base. The ancient herders were more than happy to utilize their wide mobility to play middleman, and the helpful trade that they facilitated helped everyone advance. Hold on, hold on. We can kill people a lot more efficiently with this new mobility, they thought. A lighter and sturdier carriage for war, or the chariot, was invented, and all of a sudden, the peaceful, friendly herders were incentivized to not be so peaceful or friendly anymore. 
Shell-shocked and properly spooked at the unstoppable raiders, the farmer civilizations were forced to adapt their own horses and chariots. No child left behind didn't apply back in those days. The herders kept innovating more effective methods of murder like the recurve bow and iron mongery, now rampaging into the very hearts of civilization. This parasitic chariot warfare lifestyle of raiding and looting spread to civilization clusters like India, Persia, and even Europe from 2000 BC. Everyone had to adapt the use of iron now if they wanted to survive another wave of raiders. The herders left behind in the plains came up with yet another innovative method of warfare. With the invention of yokes and saddles, humans actually started to ride these horses directly. This is a complete game changer, and the cavalry was the mightiest military branch up until the modern era. Fuck farming, now everybody gets a horse. Wandering around the plains without a place to settle down and call home, they adopted the true nomadic lifestyle we know today, living in portable tents and whatnot. Combining a variety of different materials with different elasticities, the nomads invented the compound bow. They could now drive the enemy absolutely insane by raining down arrows while sprinting around like children with an incorrect dose of Adderall. The nomads would roam around the plains like hippies and loot whatever sucker civilization happened to be nearby when they ran out of supplies. They were a complete nightmare to deal with, even more so than the previous chariot warfare tribes because of their deadly mobility and the fact that they had no home base for the armies to invade. You can't kill what you can't find. Terrified, desperate records about the Scythians are found in the written records of farmer civilizations by 1000 BC. In Central Asia or the Iranian plateaus, the horseback nomads were entrenched so deeply that they even built a militaristic country like Medina, which specialized in breeding the best horses and training the deadliest horsemen. The Persians, another people with nomadic roots, managed to utilize horses so effectively that they created the world's first great empire, the Achaemenid dynasty. Persia conquered the old world on horseback, toppling everything in its path from Egypt to Greece to Central Asia. This had the side effect of introducing paved roads and currency to its weaker neighbors, who were more or less forced to adopt these universal tools of civilization building. The farmers couldn't bury their heads in the sand anymore. Strong horses and cavalry were a necessity for everyone now. With the brute strength of their mighty horsemen, the Macedonian Empire dethroned Persia as the new king of the hill of the Eurasian playground, while the Qin Dynasty was the sole survivor of the bloody crucible that was the Warring States period. Their respective successors, Rome and the Han Dynasty, also eagerly developed horses as the foundation for travel, trade, and long-distance military campaigns. Right around the 4th century in the eastern Eurasian plains, the first nomadic empire, the Xiongnu, started its overgrowth. This is what Mulan is about, by the way. Let's get down to business to defeat the Huns, anybody? The Xiongnu controlled the Silk Road and tortured the Han Dynasty with its maddening raids throughout the years. Emperor Wu of Han had enough of this shit and tried to wipe them out by training his own mighty horseman army. Unfortunately, as the nomads by definition had no home base, the remnants of Xiongnu were able to flee to the western plains and heal up. 300 years later, the earth entered a universal cold age with desolate famine. The nomads had no choice but to invade the warmer southern farms as if their lives depended on it. The remnants of Xiongnu and Scythians mutated into the terrifying hybrid of the Hun. The Hun rampaged its way through Europe, leaving several history-changing legacies in its scorched earth wake, like the migration of the Germanic people and the crumble of the West Roman Empire, which then plunged Europe into the chaotic medieval ages. The rest of the world wasn't doing much better. In China, the northern nomads decimated everything up to the Great Wall, starting the bloody Game of Thrones between the 16 kingdoms in the resulting power vacuum. Islam took over the Arabias, trampling northern Africa and Persia with a hybrid cavalry of camels and horses. The brute destructive power of the horse tore humanity away from the comforting embrace of the ancient world and turned the wheels of history. This brave new world of anarchy belonged to the deadliest horsemen. The stirrup, originally invented in China, was rapidly adopted by civilizations everywhere as it spread like wildfire. The stirrup made it easier for everyone to train horsemen, not just the hyper-specialized nomads. 
By the 8th century, even the agriculture-based civilization had their ruling class on horseback. Remember, Middle Age Europe is still a clusterfuck of a bloody war zone after the proud bastion of order, Rome, was overrun by barbarians. Feudal nobility on horseback, or knights, rose to power as powerful enforcers during this power vacuum in Europe. Over in the East, the nomads integrated into the highest echelons of Chinese society through tactical marriage during the Sui and Tang dynasty. The early Islamic conquests shattered the other great powers of the Middle East, able to plunder previously unthinkably vast regions with their unstoppable light cavalry mobility. Climate change hit the world hard during the 9th century and slowly roasted the world for 400 years. No longer were Mesopotamia and the Chinese Huabei regions trampled into dust by nomad invaders over the centuries, the center of the farmer world. The torch of civilization passed on to Europe and Jiangyan, each developing rapidly over the next few centuries. Medieval Europe unfucked itself with enlightenment ideals and science and managed to propel itself all the way to the doorstep of the Renaissance. The Chinese Song Dynasty saw such an explosive economy boost that it invented paper bills to keep track of all the coins. You should check out our video on counterfeits. The Song almost reached the Industrial Revolution with their global economic trade. Almost. Thanos is coming! This is it! He could destroy life on a scale hitherto undreamt of. Have you prepared enough? The Mongol Empire made its inevitable advance, annihilating Central Asia, Russia, and China. The Mongolian military was the pinnacle of the most advanced horseback warfare. As far as the people back then were concerned, the Mongols truly were the horsemen of the apocalypse. Within only 100 years, civilization's hopeful strides towards population growth, culture, and farming output was kneecapped back to normal. The centers of civilizations were, as they have, time and time again, gutted by the nomadic invasions. Horses cranked the wheel of history, yet again, to the next era. Most of what was left of these proud farming civilizations were forced under the harsh rule of the herders once again. The East Roman millennium-long empire was annexed into the Ottoman Empire, along with Egypt and Mesopotamia. India was toppled by the descendants of the Mongols, the Timurid Empire, and became a part of the Mughal Empire. The Chinese Ming Dynasty failed to contain the growing threat of the Manchuria herder tribes, which led to the eventual fall of yet another empire. Meanwhile, West Europe survived the snap relatively unscathed and became the new center of the world after all their competitors died under the trample of the Mongolian hordes. Adapting and improving technologies like gunpowder, compasses, printing, astronomy, and alchemy from all over the world. Europe opened the exciting age of discovery. In the beginning of this video, I told you that the horse family was originally from the Americas. Remember how humans hunted them into extinction 9,000 years ago? From the standpoint of Native Americans, armed horsemen were unstoppable new monsters. The European conquerors were armed with steel weapons and genetically modified horses bred specifically for warfares from the medieval knights. Add gunpowder technology spread along with the Mongol rampage, and you could start to see how such a small expeditionary force was able to conquer entire continents with hundreds of thousands of native soldiers. They just had too much of a technological advantage. The European nations narrowly avoided the horse-driven apocalypse, and they were damn sure to use the technology in its wake to colonize the world and bring about the scientific revolution and the civil revolutions. The age of imperialism was introduced on horseback, and finally, humans found a worthy replacement for the horse. The European nations were now utilizing trains, steamboats, and automatic weapons to invade the whole world. Finally, dismantling nomadic kingdom after nomadic kingdom, the horse was finally allowed to retire after centuries of backbreaking labor. Horses connected humans on an unprecedented level. We use this vessel for good and evil, to raise entire civilizations to the ground, and to trade with each other. Unlike other livestock, which generally have a purely productive usage, horses were unique in how they allowed us to be capable of great destruction. The horse forced humanity to advance and adapt. 
What do you think is the next big technology? Let us know in the comments below. This has been David Bradford from Knowledge Raiders, and I'll see you in the next one.